but the whole idea of I, I'm a sinner, I'm born a sinner, is something that Christian tradition teaches to keep people captive. It's a very imprisoning idea. I always need you to say. When does the Christian teaching about uh, Christ's sacrifice become enough? enough? If we believe that Jesus died for our sins, then when does that take effect? Why do we have to repent? Why is it we have to ask for forgiveness? If he died for it, if someone pays off your mortgage, you don't have to ask the mortgage company to then not charge you anymore. Because it's paid. Mm -hmm. That's the, the traditional Christian thought on it. I don't subscribe to that notion about Jesus, but that's another day, another topic. Mm -hmm. But when does sin no longer take a, uh, an effect on our account? According to scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, it says God is no longer counting man's sin against them. That's what it says in the Bible. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting man's sins against them. 2 Corinthians 5, 13-ish. <laughs> Something wrong. Um, so the, the notion of sin in and of itself, I believe, needs to be discarded. We need to stop worrying about whether this is a sin or not. It doesn't matter. Because there are some things that are not a sin that are wrong. Oh, gosh. See how I, just that quick said wrong? Mm -hmm. That are not necessarily beneficial. Paul said it this way. All things are lawful. Mm -hmm. But not everything is good for me. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with anything we look at. For example, I love to go CrossFit. I usually go four to five to six times a week. This week I went once. Why? Because my shoulder hurt. <laughs> so even though CrossFit is good for me, I had to give my body time to recuperate and to repair itself. Otherwise, it would have been bad for me. But yet, we're so talking about this is wrong. No. Culture, society, the way things are, it evolves, it changes. Thankfully, spirituality allows us to take that journey. Religion, one of the big trappings of religion is it gets stuck. Once we think we've figured out the answer, we just stay there. Well, a hundred years ago, we couldn't take an airplane from here to Paris. Wouldn't work. Didn't exist. Two hundred years ago, we couldn't have taken a car from here to the Strip. Didn't exist. There was no Strip. <laughs> <laughs> so things change. The Bible doesn't talk about eyeglasses. There are things that just don't exist within the context of Scripture. Sexuality. It was not a concept in scripture. There was no such thing as gay, straight, bisexual, asexual, pansexual, all these different things we have nowadays. Didn't exist. A man took woman as property. Took a wife. Period. Wasn't no did he like her. <laughs> he didn't have to like his wife. If she couldn't produce a baby, he could throw her away. That's the Bible. He didn't like the first one, so we got a different one. <laughs> People are doing that still today. <laughs> <laughs> right? And we don't advocate that. That's not right. what I'm saying. Right. However, just recognizing that even within the faith that so many proclaim, they act in, in, in total opposition to what it actually talks about. Thankfully, we have discovered here at this church an understanding of covenants and how throughout Scripture, according to the people that are writing, the way God interacts has changed and it's different. He doesn't count sin, quote unquote, anymore. There are no rules anymore, except to love as Jesus loved us, following his example, which is really the core of every religion. The golden rule, it's found in pretty much every main religion. You want to others as you would have them do. Or don't do to someone what you don't want them to do to you. It's said in different ways. So the issue of sin really needs to be addressed. We need to put it in its coffin, and we need to bury it. Or better yet, let's incinerate it.